be in the position that he's here and and I'm saying, well, uh, that's it. We, you know, this is a long drive for this person. All right. Um, so we don't have to specify timing or anything like that. Well, we do the administrative work, and if it fits within having a special meeting before council, we will. Okay. We will send it. All in favor? That motion is carried. Councillor Emter. Make a motion that council sign the proclamation and proclaim September as Muscular Dystrophy Awareness Month, and direct administration to advertise the proclamation on the electronic sign. Is there any discussion on this item? All in favor? It's carried. High Prairie Beautification Society letter of support. Councillor Long? I make motion that. Oh. My I just looked over that. You don't have it's it not because in it was in your code. Oh, it's one you added. Over here. <laughs> that council send a letter to of support for the High Prairie Beautification Society. Purple. Um, and maybe you could provide us a little more information on that there. To um, uh, administration? To draft it? Okay, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. The letter, are you aware of what? No. Okay, the, uh, that's in your correspondence file. <laughs> um, the Beautification Society had a um, um, audit of their eligibility for gaming proceeds and has come up that the uh, um, Alberta Lotto has determined that they are a hobby group or a social group and therefore are ineligible for gaming proceeds. There is a hearing that um, the society has got to justify why they are not a hobby or a um, social group and they have requested letters of support from the uh, local MLA, Hector Goudreau, the MLA that is the chair of the Rural Caucus, uh, Honorable Dave uh, Doug Horner, who is the Minister of Treasury, which Alberta Gaming falls under, uh, the local Chamber of Commerce, the uh, <coughs> Town of High Prairie, and the MD. And they have also received, out of the blue, a letter of support from the High Prairie Golden Age Club to um, to support the fact that this the society does a, a uh, um, admiral job job of of uh, helping the betterment of the town raising their spirits or whatever. And they're not a hobby or a social group. So so if anybody wants to come out when it's 40 below and string lights and chit chat, come ahead. <laughs> so anyways, um, any other letters or letters of support would be well welcomed because uh, I, I don't, s I hope that the politicians get involved because the bureaucrats are certainly not doing us any favors. Uh, did we vote <coughs> on that one? No. All in favor? It's carried. Next item of business is the Councillor Emter. The council received the CAO Kelly, Kelly Tamaklo written and verbal report action list for information. Yeah, actually we were going to, that, that usually comes after, after we look at it. But you can't discuss it until you make a motion. Well, I think we did that. It's a thing that we go back and forth. Oh, I see, I see, I see, okay. Well, we'll let you make the motion when and if it comes time. We don't vote until the end anyway. Do you have any questions regarding the CAO's report? Councillor Danaka. I do regarding, <coughs> excuse me, the library capital reserves. Um, you received the May 26, 2014 addresses the request. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've seen it because we drafted it. Um, I don't know if any of the other councillors have seen it. I believe Councillor Emter asked about that at the last council meeting. I think that the council should be receiving a copy of that so they can see what their proposal was regarding their surplus. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have to, uh, you have to make a motion on that. Oh. Okay, so your motion yeah, isn't... It's just a correspondence. I make copies and put it in your mailboxes. Well, I thought yeah. you needed a resolution no, to do... No, it's, it's correspondence. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's fine. Next item or anything else? Pastor um, I do, and and uh, I apologize to either Kelly and or Brian. I, I probably should have brought this up when I witnessed it <coughs> uh, regarding the grass cutting at Home Hardware Public Works um, was out and I had to go down to Ford 
um, last, I think it was Wednesday, to pick up my truck and they were uh, cutting the grass, whippersnipping across from BIM's car wash. Um, they had their, their safety vests on and their boots and stuff, but the one gal, uh, blonde hair, um, had sunglasses and iPads in her, like, a, like uh, headphones in her ears. Um, I don't know what the policy is regarding that for the town, regarding the um, having headphones when you're working. I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. Mr. Tamaklo? Yeah, we had this discussion before uh, with uh, Public Works, and I think apparently they also use the earplugs uh, to do this kind of work. So the question was whether they use earplugs or whether they use uh, iPad headphones. There was no significant difference. That's the kind of where the discussion was. Uh, but I could allow Brian to elaborate on that as well. But we've had this discussion before. Councillor Long? If you're cranking up your iPad and you're listening to your tunes while you're trying to run a brush saw or a lawnmower and your decibels are at such a level so that you can hear your music, there's absolutely no safety application being applied. It's just loud music and loud machinery underneath that. So they shouldn't be using the earbuds as some form of hearing protection because it's absolutely not. So um, they don't get it because we're young. We were there. We've all been there. But they should have earplugs and hearing protection. I think there's a certain amount of liability down the road if they come back with a with a WCB claim, who's responsible for that? Did you Brad, want you, to reply, Brad, Mr. Brad, Martin? do you have any thoughts on that? What's your not experience, would, though? But I mean, we've had this um, conversation, and I'm not sure what I've capt I'm capturing the the central theme of that discussion. I basically give them the option. Yeah. You give them the okay. Is that is that what you're saying? Well, no. I mean. You know, do so much. Yeah. So. Councillor Panasic? Um, I had a couple of questions, and I'll one. Oh. Go ahead. You. Okay. Um, I know we had, we had talked about the forum where we're going to have warm powers coming back up. Has there been another date set for that? Uh, we are in, in, in uh, talks with Warren. I just got in on Tuesday, and so I've been preparing for this meeting. I'll call Warren tomorrow and figure out what the next thing is. Warren is action list. Uh, one of the, I saw some of the emails. One of the reasons why we had to rush uh, the first meeting was to make sure that people do not uh, get penalized over the appeal, pe appeal period and to make sure that we are on time. That's what we call the first meeting. And the second one should be following very quickly. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Second question is just for my sense, trying to get a sense of when we're going to get going on the budget again. I, I know it's it's September. We got three months. It was a long process last time. I'd, I'd like to get started on that fairly soon. So I'm just not familiar. I can't remember the process. And I know last year we came in late, so everything was backed up. But this is a normal year. What's the process going to look like? Mr. Tamaklo? In fact, I mean, um, Herbert and I had the privilege of having some Chinese food this evening, <laughs> and that was the first topic that came up, uh, the budget. And, um, well, he has some perspective on the time frame. Um, maybe, Herb, you might want to expand on the time frame for council in terms of your budget process. Well, our proposal is that uh, in October, we begin management discussions on, on the budget for 2015. Present an interim budget to council in November. Council typically passes the interim budget before uh, Christmas holidays. Um, and then in January, and at which time we'll also present a capital budget, so an interim capital budget, interim operating budget. And then in uh, January, uh, there are continuing discussions. A lot of what happens from the budget point of view is council kind of discussing how they're going to spend the council department funds, the grants and the tax grants, 
And that's kind of what held it up last year. Um, the budget was pretty much set by early January. And it can be that way again this year too. By January, we'll pretty much have, from an administrative point of view, the budget set. So by February, certainly possible to pass the budget in February. It'll, it'll be ready anyways. And uh, then after the budget's passed, then the tax rate bylaws can be passed. Just uh, my perspective on it is that we should be ready to, well, definitely we got to approve it before we go into the new year. And I would think that the budget should be pretty darn close to finalized and everything nailed down in December. And we know December is a, it's a short month, so we've got to be, you know, talking about this by, you know, October and November to, to finalize it because things go back and forth. So that's that's just my thinking. Well, one thing I just might add with that is that there, the way we've done it in the past, there's never been a problem with it. We've always been able to get the budget passed, and plenty of time get the tax rate by law passed, get the tax notices out. So I asked council, what advantage is there into rushing it and getting it all done before January the 1st? What's the benefit? Councillor Law. The benefit is that it allows the people of the community and the businesses of the community to enter into discussions and provide input with the decisions that we're going to have to make. And I don't know about other councillors, but I know that there are some things where I want to see changes. And so it's going to instill some some good weighty discussion I think and good input from the public we need to we need to tighten up some things and so that's going to mean cutting in funding somewhere and that's going to create discussion okay, so that's going to happen in the early part of the new year the budget well the administration will have the budget 99 percent done yep. by the end so you'll have your public discussions in the new year and the budget still won't get passed until about March. That's why it takes so long. The more the better. <laughs> Councillor Danaka? Um, <clears throat> with what uh, Councillor Panasic said, since this is sort of a full year instead of two months before the budget, mm -hmm. are we advertising uh, for grants to come in before December 31st? Are we at to be yeah. just November the 31st? Yep. Yeah. We have to advertise. But are we advertising them earlier because this earlier. is... Earlier. Because we have a policy, I think it's October 31st. Uh, for We have to look at the policy, but we will advertise for grants. I actually made notes of that because last year we went through to December, I went December, December 31st. Yes. So as soon as we can, uh, we send the advert okay. in. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. But I, okay. I made a note of it here. Uh, advertise grants in newspaper, and I put October 31st in question. It's in my yellow. Okay. Any other comments? I guess my only comment was that um, when you were going through January and you said that the council uh, will then have a discussion on their department funds. I think that we should be discussing more than just how to allocate our council department funds. I think that we're looking this year on a discussion on the whole budget. Are we? Well, well absolutely, and we need to have ours. I don't see why we would run our discussions on our small portion of the budget into January like we should know what it is and be done that's know what we're working with I think what the treasurer is trying may I yes Mr. Tanaka? what the treasurer is saying is that what happens normally is the department budgets we know what they are we get them prepared if you have any questions you want to make changes you can always make changes but if you go back to last year you realize that a lot of the time was spent on the grants and that's what he's trying to. So yeah, yeah. we should just be mindful of how we allocate our time in terms of looking at the big ticket items and the grants in, that's pro right. in proportion. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I, and I yeah. that, that's my caution. I'd like to get this going soon or rather than later because I know these things are going to take time. We want to get the public involved. We want to get some input and and look at where we can make some of these savings. So that's that's my input is let's get her going quickly. We only have one meeting in December. Can I ask a question? Yes. Ms. Well, just a minute. Does are we allowing comments from the gallery? I welcome. Sure. All right, Mr. Shunter. Because what I just heard was by December second, the budget is ready to pass, and then we get into the new year, and then we engage in discussion with the community. Pardon? Uh, then we engage at that point in discussion with the community. At what point do I get the opportunity to post the budget? Should be before the, the December, before things are complete, right? Mr. Tamako? There, there are two types of the budget, right? There's the interim budget that gets passed in December, and then there's the final budget that gets passed in March. The process is still continuous, either from October all the way through December, through January, February, March. Uh, uh, open meetings are being held. People have opportunity to have their input. But there are two types of the budget. The interim budget that allows the town of High Prairie to still be in operation come January 1st, and then still the budget is still open for discussion so it, 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 and it's as much as we can we will advertise it it's going to be open it's something that we've done in the last three years it wasn't done before but i will encourage our council has an open forum people can walk in talk about the budget in, in, in any way form or shape it's your budget there was um again uh, last year there was discussion on passing an interim budget that was only 20% of the full year budget. Um, yeah. That discussion went nowhere, basically. We passed the full budget and that was it. But the provincial government only allows three months of their full year budget. The town of Slave Lake only passes 20%. The town of Valley View, I believe, only passes 20%. And that means that you cannot go spending willy-nilly because you don't really know what is going to still happen to the budget. And maybe this year the town of High Prairie might look at something like that and that will extend into January, February, March. It won't be the full complete budget allocated already. Anyhow, Councillor Ampton? I, I remember in February we were discussing uh, water rates sewer rates. Uh, we were going to review comparisons, uh, changing maybe the flat fees, this, that, and all the rest. And that was in February, and we're six months later. Um, so I imagine we're going to review it then for next year's budget. Uh, I would like to get it done sooner then, so that we can actually discuss it if we're even going to put forward um, for January, that it's a part of our October discussion. Like certain things got to come forward sooner, yeah. that's all. Yeah, I mean, let, let's, let's be frank. We can have meetings every day in October. Mm -hmm. We can have meetings every day in November. I think the team is ready to go. 24 hours, 24 7. It's up to council. We have no problems with that. But the month of September is already gone. We can't even have the last meeting. So, what he's saying is that he would like to meet with senior management in October, right? So, the later part of October, if we have a time, we'll meet with council. But if it's a matter of having everyday meeting to make you get to the point where you are comfortable, that should be no problem at all. It's up, all up to council's uh, schedule. We, can, we will do that. I will have the time for you. Well, we're only worried that we only have one meeting in December. But we can have special meetings for, for budgets. Yep. And, so it's and not, we should be starting to plan when these special meetings are. Yeah, we have no problems with that. Especially not, don't look at the regular council meeting. We have special meetings. Anything that works for council, we will, we will do. We will make sure. Okay. So heavy into November, I would imagine. October, late October, November. Yeah. Like that. Can Could I uh, yes. request that maybe you'd send us the schedule for how you would plan to present the budget and implement the budget, just for us, so that we know the the schedule, what your your plan is. We can do that. Up. Yeah. Okay. okay. That would help me just yeah. to get my head around, head around your, when your, this your is going to work and how it's going to work because I still don't have my head around. Yeah. 
And the pub, the budget are public meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. We'll keep you informed, those in the gallery that are interested. Um, any other questions? Councillor Long on the um, report, the CO's no. report? That's good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Amter, did you have any questions on the um, CO's report? What happened to the, the tobacco, the smoking? It's, it's next. Was that it's next? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's no usually I expect to see him here, but okay. He's out, he's, I'm out of order. Um, <laughs> all right, so I have, yes, Mr. Tobacco? But I just want to comment on the letter that came from Lisa uh, Johnson, and you guys saw it. I mean, just like the newspaper that we saw uh, today, yesterday, I mean, my heart was just uh, singing. And to have a letter from uh, Lisa Johnson talking proudly about the town of High Prairie was, I mean, it was so nice that I couldn't resist the temptation to put in my report. So it's one of those things that makes me happy, and the only way I can express it is to add it to my report, so if you don't mind. That's why you have it. Very wonderfully written. It's well about the town of High Prairie. Glorious, just glorious. And it is amazing how much use that skateboard park is. Yeah. It's just amazing. Every day I drive by there and it's packed every day. Councilor Janaka. Um, I have a few. Uh, page number 68 of the agenda. 597-13. Uh, it's on this page. It's also on page 65 at the top. Page uh, 597, what, 597? 597-13. Yeah, it's listed twice. Twice. So it's one on is going to budget deliberation. And then it's also the top of 65. Okay, 65. Okay, because what we've done is we've tried to separate the two things. We have 2015 budget deliberations, which I asked Crystal to do. To separate those. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah, and then okay. those. Yeah, I just did it not too long ago. Maybe I should have explained it to you. Okay, what I, I was didn't finding even, was that, I wasn't even looking at yeah, the headline. Yeah, the budget deliberation items were being trunked okay. into all the items. So why don't you separate them so that they're much, much crisp and clearer for, for council? Okay, That's that right. would explain why they're on twice. Yes, okay? please. Yeah. Okay. Any others? Nope. Okay. And that item is coming to council September 10th. I'm meeting with uh, Mel, I think Tuesday, on this issue as well. And we'll bring that item to council. Oh, great. Is that the ATCO item? The ATCO item, item, yeah. Okay. I'm meeting Mel on Tuesday, at 2 o'clock. <clears throat> All right. Okay, then. So we're satisfied then. And we have a motion by Councillor Emter to receive for information. All in favor? That's carried. The next item of business is the municipal tobacco smoking restrictions. Did we have a motion, Councillor Emter? Make a motion that Council receive the action on smoking and health a letter dated August 5th, 2014 for information. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Carried. And the next item is the Alberta Forest Products Association Conference. This is the green sheet. Mm -hmm. Councillor Long. And uh, I move that Council receive the Alberta Forest Products Association invitation to the annual general meeting and conference on October 7th and 9th at the Fairmont Jasper Lodge in Jasper, Alberta for information. Any comments? Um, I will say that you we are a forestry town and this is a forestry conference. However, uh, in light of the cost, I, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. It certainly is something though that we should not be um, it's, it's something that we should be thinking about in the sense that if you don't get yourself out and see these people, you're not going to be receiving much recognition when you 
when you are asking them for something or or trying to find out information. I'm just. Is I there just, any? As a side note, I don't believe Toco belongs to that group. No, don't. West Fraser does. So, I guess to who's Toco? Other than the sponsor of the charity golf tournament. Oh. One of. There were many. One of. Not necessarily. All right. Any other comments? All in favor? It's carried. The next item is the Alberta Transportation AUMA, and I don't have the letter. Um, this letter was in the correspondence. Um, please to advise the staff from Alberta Transportation will be attending the upcoming AUMA in Edmonton. Staff from Peace Region will be available to discuss transportation issues and grant assistance programs that may be of interest. Should you wish to arrange a meeting, please call Bev, etc. by September the 4th. My basis for bringing this forward is if we see any benefit in meeting with them, we have to set something up by the 4th. Yes? You have a meeting already scheduled. Pardon me? There's a meeting already scheduled. Oh, okay. With the uh, oh, okay. that's pretty good. Because I know I was just at uh, a meeting with Heart River Housing last night, and they one of the the other members happens to be from Donnelly, and they were saying that they've tried to make arrangements uh, with some of the the MLAs, and they couldn't make them yet. They weren't open. So you must have special pull in there, Crystal. <laughs> Connections with the ministers. All right, way to go. Any other? Uh, no? So, item received for information? Um, I move that the uh, AU, uh, the letter from Alberta tra Transportation regarding their upcoming uh, AUMA convention be received for information. All in favor? That's carried. <clears throat> All right, the reports. Uh, you have my mayor's report. Do you have any um, any comments, questions regarding it? And if there is none, then I move my report for information. All in favor? Oh, you have a question. Oh, I just had a question. Um, uh, I was just curious what. Uh, the new rec director's thoughts were with the facilities that you showed him and he was ecstatic he's a young man uh, first time he's been out of uh, BC and um, uh, he's obviously coming here for a three to five year term no uh, no plans on staying although you never know but um, he wants the experience of working as with um, facilities and he has good uh, Good background in um, organizational skills. He understands we're looking for marketing of our facilities, more programs, more usage. Um, do you have anything to add, Mr. Councillor Empter? Um, he's got extensive background uh, in sport and in the administration of sport. Now he wants to look at further administration uh, into the rec area itself instead of being uh, finite in one area. Um, so I, I believe he's using us for the experience, which is fine because we need him. He's an extremely intelligent, long-term thinker, articulate, professional, uh, very impressive, uh, both in person and uh, through our initial interview. Um, I'm quite pleased. Uh, I think that he will bring a level of professionalism to the department and the board, and uh, he will they will benefit us greatly. Okay. Any other questions? I move my report for information. All in favor? It's carried. I do have another motion that I would like to make because um, I have not been receiving correspondence that is addressed to the mayor. I, it, it goes into the correspondence file, but if I don't see it in there, I don't see it. And I know that there's letters coming into the town that are specifically addressed to the mayor of the town of High Prairie. So I would like, my motion is that I direct the administration to place the hard copy of the letter in my mayor's inbox so that the mayor receives correspondence addressed to the mayor. 
If there's no discussion, all in favor? That motion is carried. And the next one is Councillor Carrier, but he is not here, and I do not believe he has the re written report. Uh, no, I don't have it. Councillor Danaka? <clears throat> you have my report in front of you. There's no questions. Any questions? Any questions? Will you receive your report for information? I move to receive my report for information. All in favor? Motion is carried. Councillor Emter? I have nothing to report at this time. You did a great report on the Recreation Director. And he starts September 18th, and we're uh, looking forward. No? 12th. 12th. Oh, I believe 12th. it's the 12th. It's the Monday. Oh, even better. Yeah, so I it is it was sooner. the 18th. So nope. September 18th. Though. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, she's, she's, incorrect. she's incorrect. I believe. Let me double check. Could be the 12th. Sorry, the, if I'm reading this correctly, the 15th. Monday, September fifteenth. Split the difference. Yeah. Fifteenth. So that's good. Yeah. He'll be here sooner. Um, we're trying to attract his wife to come here also. She's a chartered accountant, manager of a large firm. Uh, hopefully there's something here. Hmm. Move my non report for report <laughs> for information. All in favor. That's carried. Councillor Long. The workshop course for the um, for our assessments of warrant powers I thought went very very well. Um, had a lot of feedback from the public regarding it and again I encourage everybody when you get your tax assessments to look over it and understand it and if you have any questions please contact the town and the administration so that they can let you know the process I encourage everybody to do it. It's been a great learning experience for all of us, I think, involved. Um, had an interesting brief discussion and meeting with uh, CRC, and I think we'll be seeing them coming to us in the near future uh, with a revised and revamping of, uh, of, of their building. It uh, doesn't look like they're going to bring a building in. They're looking at buying furniture store and use that facility and I cautioned them because my understanding is that would change the dynamics of their proposal dramatically uh, with the province and they could very well lose their funding I think I think they're gonna be in trouble but it's gonna be a brand new facility for an older facility that will require upkeep maintenance and, and higher costs and maybe not as well suited I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of issues that they're going to have to discuss about that. And uh, so they're going to uh, get some information and, and bring it back to me. So. Are you our rep on that? No. They came to me. Oh. Who's Debbie our is our rep. No? Debbie? Debbie. Debbie. Oh, okay. And I believe I'm the alternate. Yeah. Um, when I was part of the CRC PAC many years ago, we actually looked at purchasing the house the furniture and it did not work for a child care center it would work for an office building but it is not set up for child care no, it's not. Uh, no, it's not. whether it's uh, washroom facilities so many windows per square footage for natural light there's, there's a whole requirement that w did not qualify yeah. so I hope if they approach us I hope they approach us for a daycare center not an administrative building. Yeah. So, so I caution them that their funding, uh, funding sources and, and agencies would be probably uh, revisiting. And uh, and they said, well, you're one of our funding sources. I said, yes, we are. I want to be very careful about what you're thinking on doing here because I, I just see it jeopardizing what they're trying to do, and it's a good thing what they're trying to do. I don't think this is the right path for them. Thirty-seven and a half thousand dollars is what comes to mind. Uh, how much have we uh, are we uh, allocating to them? 
I think I'm 30, 30, 30, 37,000 for some plus the But it's, it's not, has not been dispersed at this point? I don't believe you know, there's been dispersed. Okay. The land was already uh, purchased. <coughs> so they already own the land. Yes. Uh, this mm -hmm. was just for a building. Okay. Anything else? That's everything. I well, that's a good verbal report <laughs> for, uh, for acceptance. All in favor? And Councillor Panasic. Um, now, the uh, events that was the assessment meeting uh, was there, but the uh, golf tournament hasn't been talked about, uh, the fundraiser, and that was a pretty good success. I'm not sure if we've got a, a total on what was raised there for STARS and the uh, proposed new helipad, but it was, uh, being there, it was well attended and uh, Everybody seemed to have fun. Uh, a lot of uh, politicians and stuff were there, so there was lots of connections being made and discussions. So that was it was good that way. But uh, anybody know what we made? Uh, did they tally it up yet? Was it Not that I'm aware of. No, I haven't heard anything. Councilor Hampton. The word I heard was good. They they were hoping for just over forty. Okay. Okay, but uh, I don't know what happened that was before going into it oh. the oh, week no. prior to it yeah yeah they were they were pretty I sure 40 were. with no problem yeah but i think they were thinking 60 yeah. at the end so. split two ways of course yeah. so i i haven't heard anything but that was good and uh i also attended a heart river housing meeting um yesterday and uh, it was more dealing with their policies and procedures and reviewing that, so that was uh, part of it. But also some things going on, they're meeting with uh, some of the MLAs to bring forth their uh, Fox Creek proposal where they've been hoping to get a new facility in, in Fox Creek and uh, they're lobbying for funding and they've got a meeting with the MLAs.